what do you think has worked well for you in your term? So in the last two terms that I've been serving, um, I've been able to really establish some relationships with uh, people across the aisle. I've been able to pass bills, both in my name and uh, not in my name, which is sometimes the way you have to do it when you're a minority member down in or up in the Capitol. Um, and I, I really feel like establishing those relationships, especially knowing those after, you know, those people after four years, I, we know how to work together and I will continue to do that in the next term. Okay, so working across the aisle, that seems to be a, a hot topic issue, not just in the state, but federally, right. uh, this election cycle. Yes. More so than ever, uh, at least in my lifetime. Right. Um, what's the importance of that? Can you stress that enough? Well, I think it's important to know that the person that you're working with, um, when you're in the middle of a heated argument, they're not evil. They're not different. They want the same things. We all want to live in a good community, a safe community, one where we have opportunities, where we have a strong economy. But the ways in which we achieve that goal are very different. And I think that we need to remember, ultimately, that these are people with families and personalities. And when you approach a person that way, then you're much more likely to be able to engage with them in a very real and authentic sense, uh, which is much closer to being uh, respectful and civil and accomplishing your goals. Okay. So moving forward then, uh, you've seen what Southern Arizona needs. You've dealt with Southern Arizona. Right. Uh, in the next couple of years, what is the main priority for Southern Arizona? Well, I think Southern Arizona is no different than the rest of the state and, in fact, the rest of the nation. And I think that's education. Education is the backbone of the middle class. It's the opportunity that, that having an education affords a person and a community is uh, it's immeasurable. And so we need to make sure that we have the top-notch, top-quality um, access for everyone, not just the wealthy and not just the privileged. How do you plan to do that? <laughs> That's the number one question, right? Um, I think it's a matter of priorities. Uh, first, I think we need to stop cutting uh, our taxes at this point. If we can't pay our bills, we need to make sure that we maintain our revenue. And uh, that's, 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 the, that's the first step, is stop cutting. Uh, the second step is really finding some uh, money that still is, is in, in existence. So we have tax credits um, that are available that we don't know if they actually accomplish the goal. So the goal is usually, do they, do they create jobs? And if the answer is, I don't know, then maybe we need to take a second look at those. Um, that's another way we can do it. And then the third way that I've, I've looked at and I've been really thinking will accomplish many goals is to look at the prison system. It's the third largest budget item, and it's the only one that's going up while education and healthcare are going down. So if we can make sure that we have drugs, drug uh, abuse programs and mental health care programs that are less costly and more effective so they can reunify families, it's still safe in the community, and we're saving money, we can redirect that money and put it back into preventative services and education. So that's a beautiful segue then. Prop 205. Uh, yes. Regulation of recreational marijuana. Right. Uh, where do you stand on that? Well, I do think that it's, it's, it's pretty controversial, but ultimately what it comes down to is I, I think that it should be legalized. And the reason why is uh, exactly what I was talking about. It's the private, not just the private prison system, but the entire system. We need to make sure that we're focusing more, our police force, our incarceration, our probation officers, the whole system on people, violent criminals, and not people who just have a little bit of marijuana, some drug charges on. And not only that, but it, it frees them up to really focus on, on those issues in the community. Um, and, and it's really, it's a drug that's never killed anyone. And certainly it'll be regulated the same way alcohol and other products that are just as dangerous for kids, if not more, um, like our cleaning products, like um, small objects that children can, can swallow. There are so many things that parents need to be around to make sure that their children don't have access to that. And I think that we'll treat this in the same way that we'll treat anything else. Okay, another proposition, Prop 206. Uh, increased minimum wage uh, overall right. until 2020. Right. Uh, is this something you think will benefit the state economy? Is it something that won't benefit the state economy? I think it'll benefit, ultimately, because when you have uh, both supply and demand, um, working out the same way, uh, then you're going to have a stronger economy. So the, we always comp, uh, focus on the supply side, um, where you know if there are jobs available and everything. But if you can't have people uh, who can afford to buy your product or your service, 
that's not going to help the economy. Um, and so, and so not only that, I think that people need to be valued for the work that they put forward. And it's, it's a progression, uh, the way that this proposition is put forward and it's up to $12. Um, and it, and allows for certain uh, exceptions for small business owners and such. So you are in support of Prop 205 and 206? Yes. The border and immigration, it's a federal issue really at right. the end of the day, but you know, statewide as a part of the legislature, you still have a say in what happens. Right. Uh, what is your kind of overall stance on the border? Well, I think that we need to treat the border as an opportunity as opposed to um, something that is uh, a negative for Arizona. We have billions of dollars. I think it's upwards of $25 billions, billion dollars that go across the border both ways. And if we can start making sure that we have uh, more commerce, we can, we can um, have legal um, uh, transfer of goods and services across the border, then we're much more likely to uh, address the issue in, in a way that's less fear-based and more opportunity based. And I think that certainly we do need immigration ref reform. It's a totally broken system. And that's why a lot of people don't participate in it. I think that they would participate more often if they knew that they could get through the process within a reasonable amount of time and that it was actually addressing the needs of, say for instance, agricultural um, workers. So people in farms need people to work on the, in those fields and they're having a hard time getting their visas. I mean, it, it just, it's ridiculous that we can't, we have people who want to work, we have people who want to hire those people to work, but we can't seem to figure out how to get that done. So it's clear to me that the federal government needs to be working more on that and at a much quicker pace. Um, as far as the state goes, we need to make sure that we deal with the situation at hand, however, however that is. But I think that our first step is always to appeal to the federal government to do their job before we step in with our money and our resources to do it. And then, like I said, treat it like an opportunity, increase our chances for doing business across the border. And that means making sure our roads are adequately funded and there's no backups when people, trucks and all sorts of uh, goods and services come across the border, that they can easily come through our system and they can um, safely, again, um, use uh, businesses that are right along the border that we've, we've supported along the way um, to do that. And I think that will help our economy and will help our border issues. So as the incumbent as well, you've served two terms. Mm -hmm. um, what is one thing you wish you did better? And what is one thing that you think you did really well with? Well, I can say that I'm very proud of the fact that I've shown up for every single vote in four years. I've never missed a single vote. Um, and that's because I show up for representing District 10, and I think they deserve it. Um, I'm very proud of that. I think that what I could do more of um, is probably, you know, again, establishing relationships with people who are just coming in, um, allowing them to see me as not the enemy, but someone who wants to contribute to good ideas, to not necessarily take credit for it, but to allow everyone to see um, the different skills and attributes that Republicans, Democrats, men, women, people from different backgrounds can actually bring to a legislative process for the benefit of everyone in Arizona. Um, and I think that's a work in progress, and I don't know if I'll ever stop doing that. Do you think you're going to be up again? Do you think you're going to win this election? Well, I hope so. I've been going door to door. I've been talking to people. I've gotten really good response. Um, and, and I hope I get the opportunity. I know I can do this well. Um, I, I believe that I do represent the uh, good interests of the people who I've talked to. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, something that I think that I can actually contribute more to. And I feel really energized to still do this. Okay. Lastly, what does it mean to you to represent this district? Well, I think it's really, um, I think that the person, my, so I'll back up. The thing that matters most to me is to show non-traditional candidates that they have a part and a voice in this community. I know I look different. I know that I come from a different background. I'm a military kid. Um, I, I have a disability. I've dealt with the healthcare system. I'm the first in my family to get a college degree. Um, these are all things I take with me when I talk about the issues of the people who are struggling, the people who don't often get a voice in this state and this district. And I hope that I've been able to serve as an example that they should see this as their government and that they have a voice in this as well.